Life is 10% of what you're dealt with and 90% on how you deal with it. You know, a lot of people deal with our 10% and we forget it's only 10%. You know what I mean? My 10% are my legs. I miss my legs. I can't, I can't change that. I still have 90% to show the world what I truly can do. I still have 90% to put a smile on my face, walk out the door with my legs, and go and take on whatever life throws at me. Um, but we, as humans, sometimes get caught up in what really doesn't matter, right? When you can look at yourself in the mirror, right, and say, this is my flaws and all. This is who I am. That's when you start taking control of your life, when you can laugh at yourself, right? And you can say, you know what? Yeah, I, I am missing my legs. You know what? I am short. I am tall. I am, I am this. I am that. And accept that because it's only 10% of who we are. But you still have 90% to show the world what you truly can do. And if you can grasp onto that concept, man, nothing can stop you. You know, and I love the fact that, you know, it's not, you know, one of my favorite quotes from Rocky. It's like, you know, it's not how hard you can hit, right? It's how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward, right? It's how hard you can take hits and, and sometimes fall down and keep pushing forward through the hard times and, and the good and the bad. Um, I just look at my life and, you know, the day I was born, the doctor said I would never walk. You know, to be born missing one leg, um, um, congenitally, everything else normal is one in a million, right? To be born missing two legs is, is unheard of, right? The day I was born, the doctor's like, you gotta go to room 103, <laughs> you ain't gonna believe this, right? Like, they didn't know what to do, right? So st statistically, right, I shouldn't be here right now. Um, if you look at the facts and the numbers, right, um, the odds, right, I shouldn't be running. I shouldn't be competing, I shouldn't be winning medals. Um, but we're not going off facts, right? We're going off hard work, we're going off determination. We're going off willpower. Um, and when you set your life and, and trying to break into a barrier that nobody has ever broken into, you can't, you can't go off the numbers. Because I'm trying to do something nobody has ever done before. Um, so I can't look back and compare myself to anybody. Um, I just got to look forward. Um, and with that type of mindset, the only way you know you're doing enough if you give it all you got. The only way I know that I'm pushing forward you know, I can't go back and compare it to this guy, that guy. I gotta leave the track it's hurting. I gotta finish the workout, basically almost throwing up, right? I gotta, I gotta leave the track to the point where I, I gotta pop my legs off and crawl to my, to, my, to my car, right? I gotta put back on to drive, but still I gotta crawl to my car. <laughs> but you gotta set your own boundaries, right? My, my biggest disability isn't the fact that I'm missing my legs. My biggest disability is the fact what people think I cannot do with the fact that I'm missing my legs. So I've built my whole life proving to people what I can do. I've been building my whole life proving that just because I'm missing my legs doesn't define who I am, right? Just because I'm missing my legs doesn't mean I can't be the fastest man in the world. Who told me I couldn't? I mean, I heard it a lot, but who said, right? I'm setting these boundaries and not only for me, but for the kids that's growing up. There's a kid out there with a disability, you know, or going, going through something internally, externally. You respond to adversity by saying, I don't accept that, yeah. right? Like, yeah. I'm not gonna make excuses. Yeah. That's so transformative yeah. already, because yeah. most people take their excuse, thank you very much, they go home. Right. And then two, that you accept, you accept that life isn't fair. And in some ways, use that to your advantage. Yes, you have to, you know what I mean? When you, when you accept the fact life isn't fair and you don't have excuses, because this is what happens, when you have excuses, it means you're pointing fingers, right? It's their fault, or it's his fault, it's her fault, it's life, you know what I mean? It's, it's people's fault, right? And when you're pointing fingers, you're losing your power. Who's teaching you all this stuff? It's so, <laughs> like it's so powerful. Like it, life is a test, yeah, yes? It is, it's Agreed? a test. Everything. Hardship is a test. Suffering is a test. Yes, it's a test. Most people break. Yeah. Most people are diminished yes. by hardship. Most yes. people are diminished by the test. Yeah. But among us, there are people like you who are created from the hardship. Yeah. But I want to know so desperately <laughs> why. Why you? 
I, and, and that's the question, and I'm saying I ask myself, but you know, reverse. So give me the tricks. Yeah. What do you do to your mind? You're on, you're running, you're about to vomit. Right. And you do oh, another man. rep. I like, what that. are you doing? I love that, right? I love but what are you telling yourself I, in your I, mind at that moment? I, I tell myself, keep that, that mind over matter. Right, it's it's the mind. It's not it's not what we go through. We perceive things, right? I'm perceiving the workout to being hard. I'm perceiving my body hurting and breaking down. And so you have to go into this mode to where your mind takes over your body, right? And your body is done and it's shutting down and it can't go anymore. You go into a little. You go to trick. You got to trick yourself. Man, we've already done five of them. What's one more, <laughs> right? And your body's like, dude, do you not feel how we feeling right now? Like, I'm, this is all going through my head during the workout, right? Mind you, I'm talking to myself here, right? <laughs> and you're like, okay, okay, how about this? We'll just get going. We'll just get started. Let's focus on the first seven steps, right? Let's focus on the first 10 steps. Let's just get going. And let's finish the race. Let's never quit. Never, never stop. Then you go into the mindset to where we can walk away and who's working hard as you, right? That's the greatest feeling in the world. That's what people don't realize. It's you have the medals, right? You have the world records. And you, you know, we have these TV shows where it's amazing and you know, the, the fans and the followers, but that's great. I love that, you know what I mean? But what makes me the greatest feel in the world and I feel like what makes me as a person is when I'm on that last rep of that 300 and I gotta convince my body where it feels like I cannot go any further, right? to go a little bit harder. And so when I do that, I conquered that moment, right? I challenged it and I defeated it in that moment. And nobody can take that away from me. Like I fought, right? Nobody really sees that. I was having an internal battle with myself, with my mind and my body, when my body was telling me I can't, right? I can't do this, I can't do that. I heard that my whole life. And when I can go on the track and defeat and have that internal war inside, if I can beat that, if I can fight that, whatever's thrown at me, I'm a fight. I'm a fighter. You know what I mean? That's why I love running. That's why I love pushing the limits, right? I love being in uncomfortable positions, right? Because that's when you find out what your talents are, what you're good at, what you're bad at, what makes you feel uncomfortable, all your forms of fear, right? When it comes to fear, I was, I was talking to one of my mentors and he broke it down to me. He said, you have two people, this is how they, they respond to fear. They forget everything, right, and run. F-E-A-R, forget everything and run, right? He said, you want to be the type of person, an individual, when you see fear, when you have fear, you face everything and rise. Um, and that's the mindset I want to have. Every time I'm afraid of something or something scares me, I want to face it head on. I want to, I want to go toe to toe with it, right? And anyway, whether I win or lose, sometimes you're going to lose, right? I can walk away and say, you know what, this is what I learned about it. But if we're always living our lives as scared and afraid to push the limits, right? And, and, and that's the thing. If I was to wake up and like, you know, I'm just going to sit in my wheelchair today. I'm going to sit on the couch, right? I'm just going to collect a check. You know what I mean? From the government, I, I'm not going to push. I'm not only have to put on my legs. Society will be okay with that, right? Society you, expects it. Expects that, right? And even though I'm not bothering nobody, right? I'm, I'm not dying. Dude, I'm not living. I'm not living if I do that. And the, and the time is now. We dealt with a lot of things, right? We dealt with racism, we dealt with sexism, you know what I mean? The ADA accident, but we're, now we're facing disability. The time is now. We gotta look at ourselves and say no excuses, right? We all deal with demons. Everybody does, right? Everybody has problems, right? When you can conquer those problems and say, I have a problem, I'm gonna face it and rise, right? Face it all. That's when you can get things done. Who has control over you? Who can stop you, right? And every day that I wake up, I say I wanna be one of the fastest men in the world when I have no legs. Some people laugh, some people joke, some people don't even believe me. I can look in their face like, dude, I'm trying, I'm trying to qualify for the Olympics. They're like, all right, cool, <laughs> sure. This guy, right, he's on something right here, right? But I'm dead serious. And even though if they don't see it, I see it, right? I manifest my own destiny, right? God I, damn, <laughs> that's, that's a statement right there. You know what I mean? It's about manifestation, dude. You, 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 put, it, you put that out there in the world. That's what people, and that's the beautiful part about it, right? Every day that I wake up, right, I believe that I'm going to walk. 
point blank period. I believe that I'm going to go out there and run. I manifest that out there into the world. I expect that, right? I put that out there every single day. I'm going to walk. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. So that's out there in the world, right? You can't take that back. It's out there. So what's going to happen is once it's out there, you're going to start conforming and doing things to figure out how I'm going to walk, how I'm going to run. I believe that I can be one of the fastest men in the world. So I'm going to start conforming to that. So I'm in those 300 workouts. I already put that out there that I'm going to be the fastest man in the world. I want people to just laugh, smile, and shake their head in disbelief of how much I fought in my life. And I, regardless of how many no's that I hear, and I'm gonna, I heard a lot, I'm going to hear more, right? Uh, as, many, as many as I hear that, you just need to hear a few yeses. And I hear that yes every day that I wake up in myself. And I hear that yes when I meet people like you, right? And, and I have the same mindset and the same vision. You know what I mean? We're aligned and in the same path. Everything happens, you know what I mean? I just feel like it's just who I am. That's how I'm structured. I couldn't, and, and if I didn't live this life the way I live it, it will kill me. If I have to sit on the couch every day and, and just wonder what's gonna happen out there in the world, you know what I mean? I wonder what I could do if I had the opportunity to. That would irk me, man. That would irk me. I have to get out there and try it. I have to get out there and do it, whether I succeed or whether I failed. I know I can walk away and say I gave it my all. And that's the greatest feeling in the world. God, that's the greatest feeling in the world. I'm gaining so many tools in life but trying to become an Olympian and trying to become one of the fastest men in the world. And hopefully, you know what I mean, once it's all said and done, I can use the tools. You know, when I first started running, I was a little kid, man. You know, I was just getting started. I, didn't, I never run in front of 80,000 people before. I never been on an international stage before. I've never even traveled before, right? I never even left the country. I never left Tennessee, right? <laughs> before I started running, my first time in California was because of running, right? Like, I was just this little country, boy from Tennessee, right? Eating ribs and, <laughs> and collard greens, right? And because I wanted to become a runner born without legs has allowed me to see the world, has allowed me to be on a show like this. Like, come on, man, like, I'm gaining tools, tools in life. And so when I'm done running, I will be able to look back and say, man, I learned this about myself. I learned that about myself. Right, and, and I think that's the great part of giving it your all so you can figure out what you're good at and what you're bad at and what you can do and what you can't do. And when you find out what you can't do, then try to figure out how you can do it, right? That's the only way, right? But if you're sitting back and complacent and scared and afraid to challenge life and to challenge yourself, it's a scary place to be in. That's a place that I know I don't want to be in. I know you don't want to be in at all. Very true. Yeah, what man. would you teach to if you had a child, what are three powerful lessons that you'd want to make sure they learn? Oh man, one is it's just gratitude and humility. You know what I mean? Um, that's one thing that's really helped me in my life and just being thankful for what I have. Don't leave before the miracle happens. Um, two, be proud of who you are. From top to bottom, be proud. Live it, express it. And the last, just never give up. Never, ever give up. The only way you can fail is if you give up. And the only person that can stop you from quitting is you yourself, that person in the mirror. You know what I mean? People can derail your, your, your main objective. They can maybe derail, right, your mission. But the only person that can have you stop fighting is that person inside of you. So. How do you keep fighting? Like when it's really nasty hard? Yeah. Do you have when a it, mantra or anything that you man, say? Or? When, it, when, when it gets bad, right? I first think about the people who, who sacrificed for me, right? Who worked hard for me, right? My family members, you know, the people in my life now. Um, like, man, they, they believed in me, right? So I can't, I can't give up on them, right? And, and then I look back and I think about everything I've been through so far in my life, 
right? When it gets tough, I'm just like, I can't push no farther, right? It goes back to playing those mind tricks mm. again. You gotta play those mind tricks just like you playing mind tricks on the track. You gotta have those mind tricks with yourself. Like, man, look at everything you've done. Oh, you've made it this far. Why quit now? Why stop now? You've done, did all this. Why, why quit now? It's be a waste of time, mm. right? And the last is just being thankful, man. Because I know it could be way worse. <sighs> it could be way worse. So I'd be selfish to give up. That'd be rude of me, disrespectful. That'd be so disrespectful. To the kids that are watching To the you? kids that are watching me, to the, to the kids who don't have what I have, right? There's kids in other countries who, who would wish and hope and pray and beg to have legs like these. Mm. To have opportunities that I've had. It's so disrespectful, man, if I, if I gave up. That'd be rude, right? That'd be so rude, and I, that's not what I want to be. That's not what I want to stand for. You know, I, I always think about my legacy and, and what I want to stand for. And if I'm going to be the man I want to be, and I feel like I want to be the man that I'm meant to be, I got to keep fighting. Who is the man that you're meant to be? Man, the man I'm meant to be, somebody that changed lives. Somebody that changed perception, perspective, right? I want to be the guy who uh, meets somebody they thought one way their whole life, right? And by a conversation they had with me or, or an interview they seen with me, their whole mindset has changed, right? When they thought they couldn't do nothing, right, with their lives, so they thought they wasn't good enough. Right, because we always fight that, that internal demon that you're not good enough, right? When somebody thinks that, hope they can see my story and benefit from it, right? And they say, you know what? If Blake can do it, that I sure can do it as well. I'm trying to be the fastest man in the world, and I have no legs. That's a double entendre. I'm like, what? what? That doesn't make sense, right? It doesn't, it doesn't, how is that in the same sentence? Step outside the box. Set your own goals. Rise to the occasion. And fight for your dreams, man. That's what, that's what I want to stand for. That's who I want to be. It's a pretty good legacy. Yeah, man. Talk to me about, so you're a kid, people are making fun of you, you're terrified to show your legs, like, I know what it's like to be a kid, obviously, <laughs> right? That, that's hard. Yeah. Like if people turned on you and were picking on you, like that's, that's an emotional death sentence. Yeah. So how did you go from that negative spiral to like, hey, one day finally, I'm gonna wear shorts and be proud right. of exactly who I am? Um, it, was, it was a few things, you know what I mean? I learned, you know, when I was got, you know, when I made fun, when I was made fun of as a kid, you know what I mean? Sometimes it stung a little bit. Right, it would hurt, or I get so awkward and it's so uncomfortable. And to the point, I was like, you know what? How about I just make better jokes? You know what I mean? Or how about I just accept and laugh with them? Right, and and I embraced it. You know what I mean? I remember at, growing up, elementary school, middle school, I would turn my leg backwards and walk <laughs> through the hallways, right? Or I would take my legs off and crawl on the teacher's desk and grab her. You know what I mean? I, I would embrace it. And once I embraced it, it, it made people around me feel a lot more comfortable. Right, I accepted it. I had to come to realization that wherever I go, or whatever I do, I am going to be an amputee. Whoever I see, they're going to look at me twice. Wherever, whether I'm in Tennessee, New York, California, I'm going to get the double take. So it goes back to that. Am I going to sit and cry and be upset and be mad about it? Or I'm going to do something about it? And ever since that moment, you know, then. I realized and I decided I'm gonna be, I'm gonna, I'm gonna push forward. I'm gonna accept the fact that I'm missing my legs. I like getting looked at, right? But as we grow up, we realize that's the worst thing that could ever happen to us is being just mediocre or being part of a crowd. We always want to, you want to stand out as an adult so you get everybody's attention, right? I didn't have a choice. <laughs> I didn't have a choice. I was gonna stand out from the time I left the house as a kid to now. And to be honest, I'm thankful for that because it allowed me to learn certain things and gain certain tools for me to be the person I am today. So at the end of the day, I'm thankful that I'm missing my legs. I can honestly look at you and say that.
I'm thankful that I was born without legs. <laughs>